Satellites now show dense forests where sand dunes once stretched endlessly, an area larger than Ireland, transformed in just five years. But there's a problem. These trees are draining groundwater that villages desperately need. Some species are already dying, and scientists warn this could trigger an ecological disaster. So is this humanity's greatest climate win or the world's largest environmental mistake? Let's find out. Did you know China's deserts are expanding by 3,600 square kilometers every single year? That's like losing an area the size of Rhode Island annually, swallowing farmland, burying villages, and threatening northern cities with massive sandstorms. The Gobi and Taklamakan deserts are marching eastward, and 400 million people are directly affected by this relentless desertification. Beijing, one of the world's most powerful capitals, gets buried under choking sand clouds 26 days per year. Imagine trying to breathe, work, and live while your entire city disappears under orange haze. Agricultural land is vanishing at an alarming rate, putting food security for over a billion people at risk. The economic toll? $54 billion in annual losses from land degradation alone. This isn't just an environmental problem, it's existential. Without dramatic intervention, scientists predict deserts could consume 30% of the entire country by 2050. That's roughly the size of India being swallowed by sand within a generation. To understand why China is so desperate to stop the deserts, you need to know their history. The 1950s brought devastating deforestation disasters, what some call China's Dust Bowl. During the Cultural Revolution's Conquer Nature campaign, millions of trees were cut down in a misguided attempt to boost agricultural production. The result? Catastrophic backfire. Ancient Silk Road cities that once thrived for thousands of years found themselves buried by advancing sands. By 2006, the situation became so severe that sandstorms from Chinese deserts reached Korea, Japan, and incredibly, even crossed the Pacific Ocean to North America. People in California were breathing dust that originated in the Gobi Desert. For the Chinese Communist Party, whose political legitimacy became tied to environmental success after decades of pollution scandals, this became a crisis of governance. They couldn't let the deserts win. Their credibility depended on it. Before this ambitious two billion tree project, China tried everything to stop the sand. Back in the 1950s, they created straw checkerboards, literally weaving grids of straw into the sand to hold it in place. It worked temporarily, but required massive labor and needed constant replacement. The sand eventually broke through. Then came the Great Green Wall, launched in 1978. Billions of trees were planted over decades, but the mortality rate hit 85% in the first attempts. Why? Wrong species selection, zero water management, and no ecosystem thinking. Trees died by the millions. They tried grassland restoration programs, overgrazed within years. They relocated 2.5 million people away from expanding deserts, but the sand kept spreading. Chemical sand stabilizers showed promise but proved too expensive and raised environmental concerns. Each solution failed for the same fundamental reasons. Planting was treated as political theater. Local officials rushed to meet quotas without ensuring trees could actually survive. The result? Survival rates under 15%. Billions spent on trees that turned brown and died within months. After decades of failure, China completely changed its approach. Instead of random tree planting campaigns, they launched an engineered forest ecosystem designed by artificial intelligence and guided by real-time satellite data. This wasn't just about planting trees anymore. It was about creating functional, sustainable forests from scratch. The target zones included the Kubuki Desert in Inner Mongolia, China's seventh largest desert at 18,600 square kilometers, plus the Muas Desert and Horkin Sandy Land. These weren't chosen randomly. They're the closest deserts to populated areas and represent moderate difficulty levels. Success here would create a massive green corridor, blocking desert expansion eastward toward Beijing and other major cities. The vision was audacious. Achieve 70% vegetation cover by 2030 in zones that had only 5% coverage. To put that in perspective, they were attempting to create forests in areas more barren than the Sahara. The project involved two billion trees, but not just any trees. Scientists carefully selected over 300 native species adapted to harsh conditions. Drought-resistant shrubs, deep-rooted trees, nitrogen-fixing plants, 
Each seedling received seaweed-based water retention pellets that could hold moisture for weeks. The scale is staggering. They built drip irrigation networks spanning 11,000 square kilometers. Drone swarms planted 100,000 seeds daily, flying in coordinated patterns guided by GPS. Before any tree went into the ground, mycorrhizal fungi networks were pre-inoculated into the soil to help roots absorb water and nutrients more efficiently. The strategy? Plant shrubs first as windbreaks and sand stabilizers. Once they establish themselves, plant trees behind the protective barrier. Every planted zone followed a strict plant water managed system with guaranteed three-year maintenance something previous efforts completely ignored. The area being reforested is equivalent to the entire Netherlands. The investment? $32 billion over five years, with 10,000 workers supported by automated systems operating around the clock. You can't just drop two billion trees in the desert and hope they survive. The supporting infrastructure is almost as impressive as the forest itself. China built a 500-kilometer pipeline from the Yellow River to supply water to the most remote planting zones. That's like building an artificial river, stretching from New York City to Cleveland. Underground drip irrigation networks powered by 200 solar farms deliver precise amounts of water directly to root zones, minimizing evaporation. 1500 weather monitoring stations track rainfall, temperature, humidity, and wind patterns in real time, allowing engineers to adjust irrigation schedules instantly. They even built desalination plants to repurpose brackish groundwater that was previously unusable turning salty, contaminated water into irrigation supply. Six new research stations were established specifically to study how these engineered ecosystems develop over time, monitoring everything from soil composition to insect populations. To transport materials and workers across former desert, China constructed 800 kilometers of access roads and extended railway lines deep into the sand. Aircraft fleets spray sand stabilization chemicals from above, while seed banks store 50 million backup saplings in climate-controlled facilities. The infrastructure investment alone totaled $8 billion, equivalent to building three Hoover dams in terms of engineering complexity and cost. The biggest hurdle? Water rights disputes with downstream provinces who worried the Yellow River diversion would affect their supplies. The technical challenge? Preventing soil salinization from irrigation, which can turn fertile ground into a toxic wasteland. The transformation has been stunning. The Chinese government reported that 100,000 permanent forest worker jobs were created. Former herders and unemployed rural workers now earning stable incomes maintaining the new forests. Many became ecotourism guides, earning three times more than they did from traditional herding. A new forestry industry worth $15 billion annually has emerged seemingly from nowhere, but the environmental changes are even more remarkable. Sandstorms in Beijing have been reduced by 70% since 2018. Imagine breathing clean air in the capital, 70% more days per year. Local temperatures in green zones dropped 3 degrees Celsius during summer months, a massive change in regions where heat was once unbearable. Even more impressively, rainfall increased by 20% in areas with successful forest coverage. The trees are literally changing the local climate, pulling moisture from the air and creating a self-reinforcing cycle. The carbon sequestration numbers are mind-blowing. 450 million tons of carbon dioxide captured. That's roughly equivalent to Germany's total annual emissions. If these forests continue thriving, they could offset a significant portion of global industrial carbon output. Agriculture is returning to areas that haven't grown crops in generations. 3,000 square kilometers of farmland have been reclaimed from the desert. New fruit orchards are producing harvests in former wasteland. Licorice root farms, used in traditional medicine, are booming creating entirely new revenue streams. Tourism has exploded. Desert to forest tours attract millions of visitors annually who want to witness the transformation firsthand. Trade efficiency has improved too. Northern routes are safer, with reduced equipment damage from sandstorms. Perhaps most inspiring, over 20 endangered species are returning. Mongolian gazelles, various raptor species, and other wildlife not seen in decades are being spotted in the new forests. The project has brought social stability too, settling nomadic populations with sustainable livelihoods tied to forest maintenance. Countries around the world are taking notice. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and multiple African nations are studying Chinese techniques to replicate them in their own deserts. But beneath this triumphant narrative lies serious concern. 
That $32 billion investment left provincial governments drowning in debt. Maintenance costs run $2 billion annually, forever. If the trees die, the entire investment evaporates. And this has happened before in China's previous attempts. There's evidence that local governments are faking survival rates to meet central government quotas. Private companies initially involved in forest management are pulling out, claiming the projects are economically unsustainable long-term. Water costs are escalating rapidly, raising questions about whether this model can continue indefinitely. The environmental risks are equally troubling. The Yellow River is being diverted at massive scale, and downstream provinces are suffering water shortages. Some scientists worry that non-native species introduced into the planting mix could become invasive. Monoculture sections of forest are vulnerable to disease that could wipe out entire zones. Despite government claims, groundwater depletion is actually accelerating in some areas. Soil salinization has appeared in 15% of irrigated zones, a warning sign that the ground is being poisoned by improper irrigation techniques. Natural desert ecosystems that support unique species are being destroyed in the name of greening. The fundamental problem, these trees consume far more water than annual rainfall provides. Ecologists warn this creates a green desert. It looks like a forest, but it's not a self-sustaining ecosystem. It's an artificial construct that collapses without constant human intervention. The social costs are severe. 500,000 herders were forcibly relocated from their ancestral grazing lands, with accusations of cultural genocide from Mongolian minority groups. Mongolia, the country, has accused China of stealing cross-border water resources and filed formal complaints. Local Mongolian communities inside China have seen their traditional grazing lands confiscated for tree planting zones. At the same time, Han Chinese settlement is increasing in these minority regions, changing demographics and threatening indigenous cultures. International water treaties are potentially being violated as upstream diversions affect downstream nations. If these forests fail after all this investment, the result could be mass migration and serious social unrest. The Chinese Communist Party has staked its climate credibility globally on this project. Failure would be a humiliating blow to their claims of environmental leadership. So what's actually happening on the ground? Satellite evidence from 2024 shows that 40% of planted areas now show genuine green coverage. That sounds impressive until you realize 60% either failed or never took hold. Independent researchers estimate that only 60% of planted trees are actually surviving, far below the 86% success rate claimed in government reports. Some zones are thriving spectacularly. The Kabuki Desert has 6,000 square kilometers of verified successful greening, a genuine triumph. But the Mu'us Desert, which the government claims has been eliminated, shows only patchy coverage when examined through satellite imagery. Three provincial governors have been demoted for falsifying tree survival data. There's a $4 billion maintenance backlog, and some zones have been quietly abandoned. The 2023 drought killed 200 million saplings in one province alone, a devastating setback. Dr. Li Wei from Beijing Forestry University summarized it perfectly. Impressive achievement, but sustainability unproven. Whistleblowers report that dead trees are being replaced just before government inspections to maintain the illusion of success. International reaction splits sharply. Supporters include the UN Environment Program, which called this the world's most ambitious restoration project. Saudi Arabia is investing $180 billion in a similar project inspired by China's model. Multiple African nations have requested Chinese expertise to help with the Great Green Wall initiative across the Sahel region. Climate scientists note that if the project is genuinely successful, it could offset an entire developed nation's annual emissions. That's a game changer for global climate policy. But critics are vocal. Mongolia filed formal water sharing complaints with the United Nations. Ecologists globally have called this not restoration, terraforming. Australia's CSIRO research agency warned that unsustainable water use threatens the entire project. Greenpeace dismissed it as propaganda with real trees. The strategic implications are massive. China is showcasing climate leadership to counter the United States on the global stage. Belt and Road Initiative countries are being pressured to adopt Chinese eco-models. Some African environmental groups are raising concerns about ecological colonialism, foreign powers imposing their environmental solutions, without considering local context. The global stakes are enormous. If this succeeds, it proves mega-projects can genuinely reverse desertification, offering hope to dozens of desert nations. If it fails, it discredits nature-based climate solutions for a generation, pushing policy toward technological fixes instead. 
Right now, two billion trees stand between advancing desert and human civilization. Satellites show green, where brown once dominated. But will it last? Water supplies are running out. Maintenance costs are skyrocketing. Debt is mounting. Yet families are farming where their grandparents saw only sand. Children are growing up in forests that didn't exist when they were born. If this project fails, it suggests desertification may truly be unstoppable on a global scale. If it succeeds, it provides a blueprint for reversing one of climate change's most devastating effects. The real question isn't whether China planted two billion trees. Satellites confirm they did. The question is whether humanity can really rewrite nature's rules. Can we engineer ecosystems that sustain themselves? Or are we just delaying the inevitable with expensive green theater? What do you think? Will these forests still exist in 2050? Or will the desert reclaim what was always its territory? Drop your prediction in the comments below. And if you think China might have actually pulled off the impossible, hit that like button. Subscribe so you can see what satellites reveal next year, because this story is far from over.